this I define visual culture as a perspective of stimulus and ability to address and critically consume media, communication and information in the postmodern world. Although the word visual can be limiting in its wordage, the important part to recognise is that the audio and non-visual component uh, is just as important as the dominant visual stimulus. About the way that the invisible affects the visible. Because culture varies so greatly, it's things like sound, smells, environments, weather, etc. Um, these all create a culture supporting the visual and then breeds this absorption of information in the postmodern world. Um, I'm going to highlight a definition of visual culture by Hooper Greenhill. He says that visual culture works towards a social theory of visuality, focusing on the questions of what is made visible, who sees what, how seeing, knowing, power are interrelated. It examines the act of seeing as a product of the tensions between external images or objects and internal thought process. To tie this term into new media technology, I believe things like social network and social medias, uh, news platforms, radio stations and visual advertisements. These are the postmodern visual culture outlets because we visually process information through these platforms. So new media technology directly relates to the way our senses transmit information to our brain and our sensory system. Our eyes transmit about 10 billion bits of information uh, per second, but we can only process about 50 bits per second consciously. So this wealth of access has led to something called digital information overload and our minds simply aren't able to handle that kind of constant influx of information. So I'm going to tie this into the public health campaign of man therapy. Man therapy was created by the Colorado Office of Suicide Prevention and the Carson J. Spencer Foundation. It features a fictional character named Rich Mahogany who provides manly mental health tips in kind of humorous videos. It's aimed at men aged 24 to 54 um, and that age range accounts for most suicides. So firstly I'm going to criticize the use of humor in addressing this issue. The way the website uses humor, jokes and fictional characters almost delegitimizes de one's feelings and the sarcastic sexist tone of the website seems to be more than a few years late on the cisgender toxic masculinity train. What I mean is this approach of appealing to the inner man just reinforces negative gender roles and the man therapy title also pigeonholes the reach of the cause. It's too limiting because what if the male or the boys that they are trying to reach doesn't identify with this mucho masculine emotionally suppressing definition of a man. I also find it very interesting that the age range is targeting 24 to 54 yet most of online traffic comes from men and boys aged 14 to 18 while only 70% of men aged 30 to 54 are engaged in some sort of digital community or social online interaction. Um, which is interesting considering the targeted demographic. <clears throat> While I'm at it, I may as well criticize uh, some design aspects of the Man Therapy website. Something as simple as color palette. Um, there's a lot of grays, maroons, beiges, browns. Uh, it's not exactly an inviting space. Um, the heading of the page reads quotes like, you can't hide your feelings in your mustache. And as it turns out, there are worse feelings than being kicked in the giblets. Again, even the images of a white man sitting behind a mahogany desk stroking his mustache and drinking scotch doesn't exactly allow for an inclusive de demographic with a wide cultural reach. Uh, it seems as if the target this campaign should be renamed to middle-aged white men who are heterosexual and grew up with fathers who tell them that they can cry. Uh, to be honest, even the fictional therapist reinforces toxic masculinity and the whole page doesn't relate or welcome men who are anything but heterosexual and white. The website is also set up in a really confusing manner. Uh, as you scroll down the page, it seems like this tile structure allows for you to kind of get lost. Um, the information is really small and a very light typeface um, and it seems like the information is, 
is almost overwhelmed by the tiles and the images. Um, although the intentions of this cause are good, I would say it was extremely poorly executed and perhaps simplifying the website to a less cluttered and more inviting space uh, would be my first step to improving, you know, changing the colour palette uh, and ridding of the misogynist, homophobic and racially exclusive site. I think social media and the internet are perfect places to inject health and wealth health and well-being campaigns because sometimes people turn to the digital world to escape from the reality in which they are suffering from issues. I think moving forward, campaigns like Man Therapy will need to evolve and consider current societal attitudes towards gender and implement more culture-fitting characters that don't limit its outreaches. Uh, visual culture and visual campaigns um, they're very successful. Unfortunately, this one failed to mimic that of current culture and instead mimicked that of an outdated mammal, which stands for middle-aged man in lycra.